The evening was falling on Sodor. The engines were stuck in the shunting yard because the points leading to the turntable were jammed. As the workmen mended them, the engines became bored. They all wanted to rest in their nice warm sheds. To pass the time, they began to talk about the upcoming Halloween celebrations. I heard a little boy on the platform saying he's going to be a zombie this year. Percy said. What is a zombie? It's a monster that is said to be a dead human come back to life. Or at least that's what my driver said. He saw a movie about them with his wife once. Edward explained. Edward then chuckled. <laughs> but she didn't enjoy it, so he said. Oh, that sounds scary. Percy said, shivering. Gordon, James, and Henry just laughed. Ha! <laughs> what nonsense! James huffed. The idea of a person coming back to life as a corpse is just complete rubbish. Percy huffed. Then he grinned at Thomas. You are partly right, James. He said. The idea of a human coming back to life from the dead is rubbish, but... He paused impressively. But what? James asked. While a human coming back from the dead is impossible, something else might be. He said quietly. What are you getting at, little Percy? Gordon grunted. Well, said Percy. Before I came to Sodor, I met an engine who came to the workshop where the first fat controller met me. He told me a tale about a railway far, far away from here. This railway was a small branch that served some farms in a large iron ore mine. The controller of this railway wasn't very kind like the fat controller. In fact, he was very cruel and greedy. He hardly ever spent any money on maintaining the engines and he poured his money into his own pockets. The engines were always in pain when they worked. The drivers, firemen, and mine employees felt sorry for the engine's pain. They lodged their complaints with the controller, but he didn't care. Soon, the farms and mines began to use the roads instead, using horse and cart instead of the rail line. Unless the controller did something, he finally caved and promised that he would find a solution. And he did. Percy paused and gave a shudder. The three big engines stared in shock. What did he do? Henry asked. One night one of the engines, number 3242, was asked to stay at a special shed that the controller had reserved for him. The engine who told me the story he said he woke up in the middle of the night to hear the other engine crying in pain. A light inside the shed flickered, and the scream suddenly stopped. After a few moments, the light went out and the shed doors opened. He closed his eyes to pretend he was asleep. As he heard the footsteps crunching away on the ballast, he opened an eye and saw the controller walking back to his office. The engine went back to sleep, thinking it was just some dream. Percy paused, shuddering again. Oh, how wrong was he? The three big engines stared in horror, enthralled by the story. The next day, the controller met the people who complained at the station. Ladies and gentlemen, I've heard your complaints about the pain of the engines. Rest assured, I have taken steps to fix this. Let me introduce you to the new and improved number 3242. The engine was in the yard and saw what happened next. There came number 3242, leaking and groaning like always with his scratched paint. The men gasped in horror. A woman fainted. The controller just chuckled. Where the engine's face used to be is now nothing but a smoke box door. I've taken care of 3242's pain. He won't complain anymore. He could still be, he said, really useful. The big engines gasped in shock. The idea that an engine, once living and breathing, was rendered dead, yet still forced to work on like... like... Uh, zombie engine! James said, quivering. The controller didn't stop there, ventured Percy. He kept going to whatever horrible thing he did to render an engine like we could too. The engine screws refused to drive their engines after this, but they were replaced with new crews. People called him a murderer, but he didn't care. I am the controller, and engines are best seen and not heard, was all he said. What, what, what about the engine who told you the story? Gordon gasped. His crew saved him. One night, the engine crew fired him up, and they left the rail. They didn't know where they would go, or what they would do. But working anywhere was better than working on that runway. Better than working among the living dead. 
There was silence in the yard. Just then, a workman came walking up. The ponds are fixed. You can get back to the sheds now, he said. The three big engines took off quickly. Edward remained behind. He looked at Percy and chuckled once they were out of earshot. Do you think we should tell them about the faceless engines? He asked. Maybe some other time after Halloween, Percy said cheekily. And the three engines puffed off to join the others in the shed.